Aren't we at Sun News in the media a lot the past 24 hours? And I guarantee this will go on for days and days to come. And I think you know why. Look, if you've spent any time in a, a real dictatorship, you will know what lack of freedom, and in particular lack of freedom of speech, is all about. It, it bites at the soul. It burns at the, the edges of your very being. When you return to the free world, you realize just how vital the liberties we tend to take for granted really are. We are free in Canada, of course we are, but do we genuinely have a media that represents all opinions and all ideas? Well, you know the answer as well as I do, if indeed you have any sense of objectivity and fairness. Now, I say all this because we at Sun News are currently applying to have the same sort of license as most of the other guys, CTV and CBC, even BBC Canada and CNN, for goodness sake. Frankly, and being candid, as it stands now, we can't and won't survive. We're in only 40% of homes. We're all over the dial. You have to pay to, to have us. We're very, very high up. But that means we can't establish a, a sufficiently large audience to, to sell advertising properly and get the numbers that we need. The race is, well, the race is fixed, really. Like asking one athlete to carry a, a lead weight and only use one leg while the others are allowed to run as fast and free as they like. So... Let's make this clear. We don't want special rights or privileges, just good old Canadian fairness. After all, we produce 96 hours a week of unique and original Canadian broadcasting. We employ well over 100 Canadians, and, and all this would end if we don't get this new license. Obviously, there are people who do not like what we say and what we are. Yeah, but what's your point? Of course there are, just as I, for example, don't like what other broadcasters might say. But I believe in their right to say it and will defend that right with all my might. It's what being Canadian and democratic and fair-minded is all about. Those people who want to silence us don't believe in free speech. They believe in their speech and nobody else's. We bring a different voice to Canadian television and one that is as Canadian as anybody else in this country and perhaps even more so. We're not Fox News. We're not the CBC. We are us. Look, I've written 14 books, some of them boring literary biographies, but others rather successful. My last two books were on the bestseller list in Canada for 18 weeks. Ezra Levant has also written bestsellers. Brian Lilly's last book on the CBC has sold tens of thousands of copies. Ezra, Brian, Charles Adler, David Aiken, and I, we've won dozens of awards for our journalism and broadcasting in Canada and abroad. Our news team is also outstanding, and we have studios from coast to coast. We've broken so many big stories. We ask questions other people will not. We go to places that other networks just won't go. There will be people, powerful people, special interest groups, activists and zealots who will try to oppose us and to limit our free speech and your right to hear it. Ask yourself why that is. Being ignored is a terrible punishment, is it not? Well, we're going to ignore you guys. The next few days, the next few weeks, will be a watershed in Canadian broadcasting and, indeed, Canadian freedom. Choose sides. Please choose sides and please act now before it's too late. What I'm still beguiled by, and this story we're going to tell you in a few moments' time, and, uh, and Ezra Levant, I think, has the, the, this guy on, he's, he's a seventh-year human rights student. Uh, so seventh-year human rights student at a university. I mean, how many years does it take to get a degree? In human rights, I would think about a month and a half, if you're lucky. But all those years, public funding to subsidise an education. Carlton University, hmm. Uh, a free speech wall, a free speech wall torn down within hours, only hours after students installed this uh, free speech wall to prove that campus free speech was alive and well. It was torn down by an activist who claimed the wall was, quote, an act of violence against the, yeah, the gay community. Now, from what I've read, most of what was written there was very pro-gay. It was very supportive of the gay community. But even if it wasn't, so what? Freedom of speech means tolerating some things you might not agree with. Duh! That's what it is. It's not just saying, I agree with you. As part of the test, the initiation, uh, the hazing, when you come to work at Sun News, you have to be a journalist who's willing to stand outside when it feels like minus 25 degrees. Faith Goldie, welcome to you. <laughs> Hi, Michael. Just my luck to be out here on the coldest day of the year. <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> She's great. So you're, you're in Cambridge, Ontario, I think. That's right. So, south, eastern, southwestern Ontario. I'm not even sure where I am. Okay. The chilliness is getting to my brain. Let's talk free speech, Michael. Right, but before we do, Faith, how cold is it? Um, they say it feels like minus 1,000, I believe. No, it's, it's about <laughs> minus 20 with the windshield, I, I believe. I, I should love my, it. My, my heels... The good news is my heels aren't digging into the grass because it's actually frozen right now. <laughs> look, at, look at your face, you poor thing. You look as, you look as though you're, you're about to take on the Wehrmacht in 1943. But uh, anyway, <laughs> um, let's talk about this twerp. And, but the thing is, he, he's, he's not unique. This is fairly common on university campuses. The idea of free speech is anathema to these lefty loonies. That's right. And actually, there was a free speech index uh, conducted just last year of 35 Canadian schools and something to the tune of 23 or 25 of them received Fs. Only one of them, the University of Toronto, received an, an A. And even still, they had a plethora of examples of actually censoring free speech. And can I just start off by saying that I find this really rich. Uh, a homosexual activist uh, wanting to censor and curb free speech. Hi, buddy, you live in a free a democratic society where we actually value the marketplace of ideas. How else do you think that your uh, now right to get married in this country first began? Perhaps some salon where folks were talking and that sort of um, uh, uncustomary or, 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 or un generally unwelcome idea of, you know, same-sex union, if you will, was brought forth and then eventually permeated and became part of the common marketplace of ideas. Buddy, okay, so uh, you know, uh, free speech is a friend to minorities, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as anyone who takes any sort of objective uh, glance at any free speech issue should be able to agree to the same point. And as you mentioned, Michael, on the on the wall, uh, there were only about three or four comments that could in any way be connected to homosexual orientation. Uh, all of which were uh, being gay is okay, I heart gays. Uh, and the only one that could uh, be in any way construed to be anti-homosexual, uh, it was uh, someone who said traditional marriage is awesome. But that's not anti-homosexual, that that, that's simply stating a fact. No. By, by the way, when you, when you say uh, same-sex marriage began with salons, did you mean hair salons? Or, but, uh, no. No, free, free speech, I meant like the enlightenment. I know, I, I know. I know. <laughs> free speech is, is a protection, is, is a security valve for minorities. It's what it's supposed to be. The majority, uh, surely this is what we've learned from history, will always have the, whether it's the armed force or the social power, to enforce their ideas on others. Minorities having freedom of speech, whether it's to speak out in favour of a, of a Dreyfus who's wrongly convicted or a minority group that are persecuted or what... But now we have minorities, not because of their, their numbers, obviously they are by their nature, not the majority, but they have influence in society and they are examples of some of the least tolerant people I've seen in recent history. They, they actually are obsessed with controlling and preventing you from speaking your mind. That's right. These newest additions to, let's say, this marketplace of ideas, uh, where now their once minority opinion has become more ma mainstream, they have now taken on the role of gatekeepers of the marketplace of ideas, gatekeeping what is or is not politically correct. And goodness forbid, if someone says something politically incorrect, they are then elbowed out of this arena of, of free speech, Michael. And you know what? Of all places on all this sacred earth, most specifically within Canada, uh, um, uh, liberal democracy, universities should be the one place where freedom of speech, uh, freedom of criticism and inquiry is most welcome and encouraged, especially in a human rights program, which this man is apparently, you know, alumni to the power of infinity, uh, doing a, a third or fourth round victory lap. What is he in his seventh year now? Well, th again, that's something I mentioned this at the beginning, seventh year, uh, a degree takes three, perhaps four years generally. You might have to do a fifth year, I can understand that. And that's a real subject like history or English or music or something. Human rights, seven years as a human rights. I mean, when do people like this have to pay their own way in life? Yeah, but th let's not forget the fact that Carlton is very well known for its journalism program as well. And if this is the sort of ethos that's going on in Carlton uh, University, that is one where, uh, you know, ideas are basically monitored and streamlined into what is or isn't politically correct. That ought to be concerning not only for Mr. Seventh Year, you know, uh, human rights activists, but also for the budding journalists that are in there that then will go on um, to, to, to service the Canadian public and, and the ideas that are floating about within politics 
and so on. It's absolutely intolerable. And as a nation, we have to get back um, to our tradition of free speech, Michael, and uh, ma make a lot of noise as you're doing on your program right now, as I know uh, some other outlets have picked up on this story, uh, make a lot of noise to say uh, this is not only ironic, but absolutely intolerable. If we're going to be pro-free uh, speech, there is no contingency on it. Uh, you know, uh, what's happened now in today's society is that free speech is too loosely uh, then uh, right. translated into hate speech. Okay. Now, I'm going to be very kind to you. I want you to now leave this interview, go back into some sort of building, get some hot chocolate and a blanket or a nice boy, and make yourself all warm and cosy, okay? <laughs> I'll get right on that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Michael. <laughs>